Hello, is that Janice's residence? Yes. Is that Janice? Yes. Um, I'm not sure if you remember me, Janice. My name's Neil Waters. Oh, uh, you're not the thylacine man? That's correct. Good gracious. How are you? Last I, not too bad, thanks. Last I heard of you or was that you were setting up cameras in Tasmania? That's correct. How did you go? Well, we got some interesting sounds on a couple of them, actually. Yeah. We recorded a video that picked up some audio in the background that was quite um, typical of thylacine, so that was interesting. Yeah. I uh, haven't got anything on video for a while. We did back in 2016, I think we got something on video, like a yeah. trail camera from Tassie, um, yeah. and we put that in the documentary that we made. I was meant to catch up with you and show you the documentary, but I've moved back to Tassie, I'm afraid. Right. <laughs> Um, but what I'm doing is I'm actually um, ringing up people who have had sightings and I'm asking them if they would like to recount their sighting to me so I can share them with our members on our group online. Oh, right. just, yeah. to, just as an audio thing, you can remain anonymous if you want to because um, yeah. we can edit all this. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, I was just wondering if you'd like to recount your sighting to me again that you had way, way back then in the 60s. On the Nullarbor. My my 50 year secret. Yeah, it was fantastic that you shared that with me. I was so wrapped. (laughs) Um, Yeah, that'd be all right. Well, um, any time you want to start, I can can hit record now and start recording if you like. Good heavens. (laughs) (laughs) While I got you on the phone, basically. We're all stuck at home, basically, in confinement, so I was trying to think of something... That might be a bit interesting for the members to have a listen to sort of thing, you know? Yeah. Gosh, now, I'm in a couple of, or a few days' time, I'll be 80. So um, I'll have to be thinking out, you know, what years and whatever and where I was. Well, from what I can recall, you were with your husband in a ute and you were checking a, a fence line or something on a property out there? No, 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 you got that all wrong. Okay. <laughs> Refresh my memory. <laughs> we had, um, we were living at Tarkula. He's my ex-husband was a teacher there. And um, he belonged to the, uh, to a log. Might have been the Freemasons or something. And the station owner... Or property owner of, I think it was Bolgunya Station, um, offered to take him to Woomera where the meeting was. And the two young children and myself, we stayed at the station. But we had to get there first from Tarkula. Okay. And um, when we would, we'd just got there, we'd gone through uh, one fence. Uh, gate and we just pulled in at the homestead and I happened to look back and I saw the thylacine trotting along the fence line. Okay, so you weren't far from the actual homestead itself? No, no. And it's the one that I never said anything apart from the fact that I thought people would think I was a bit silly. Sure. Um, I thought that if the station people knew about it, you know, well, they did, didn't bother them. Yeah, okay, fair enough. Um, and this was roughly in the mid-60s, I think you said, was that right? Uh, it was a 50-year secret and you told me about it in 2016, <laughs> so that was four years ago. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, at that time, my first child would have been... Four. Okay. Second one, the second one would have been not very old at all. Um, he was in the push of the the first one. He was walking, um, but I I just didn't tell anyone. I didn't want anything to happen to it. If that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, it does. 
I mean, it's such an unusual thing. And you knew what it was when you saw it straight away sort of thing? or yeah, Well, yes, because of the markings. Yeah, okay. And you'd seen them before in books and what have you? Yeah, yeah. The only thing is that it wasn't the goldy colour. It was sort of silvery. Okay, so it was more of a grey colour with, with black stripes. With dark stripes, yeah. Yeah, okay. And... I know it's probably asking a bit, but roughly how big was it? Can you recall? Was it as halfway uh, up the fence post or? No. Um, it, its gate was sort of like a, a trot. Yep. Um, how can I say it? I suppose it could have been bingo size. Yep, okay. Just an average sort of dog size. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's fair and, enough. And it didn't didn't look threatened or fussed or anything. And um uh, I, I didn't I didn't see where it came from or where it went. I just saw it trotting along the fence line. Okay. How far it, from it in meters do you think you would have been roughly? Yep. Was it broad daylight, middle of the day sort of thing? Um, in, in the afternoon. In the afternoon, yep. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, that's excellent. It's just really good to hear these stories and, and to hear people's personal descriptions of what they saw on the at, on the time, you know, at yeah. the day. Because oh, there's, there's so many people that re- recall the same sorts of things. It's hilarious, you know. There's so much in common. Um, yeah. with a lot of the sightings that, you know, there there really is something in it all. Yeah, and did you, you, you got, um, uh, there definitely are some still alive in Tasmania? Well, as far as I'm concerned, there is. Um, we've had, um, probably about five or six sightings in Tassie over the last, say, year and a half. Um, right, yeah. So that's not too bad. We we seem to. When I was in South Australia, I only moved back here in July last year. Um, yeah. But when I was in South Australia, we were getting colossal amounts of sightings in South Australia, like twenty five, thirty a year. No worries. So, really? Yeah, there there was plenty of sightings in South Australia. It's it's huge over there. It really is. So that's always very reassuring, I suppose, and comforting in some ways. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think you you need to have a, a predator in the ecosystem, but how many is always the the delicate question. Um, yeah. How many stock losses do you need? There's always less feral cats in areas where there's dingoes, and there's always more biodiversity in these areas where there's dingoes. So, well, yeah. you know, it's it's strange. They they play an interesting part. Well, they would have had their own type before white man and his cattle sheep and cattle arrived and uh, he would have had his own pred- you know been able to catch his own wild food yeah and um i don't think that they bothered the uh, white man's animals as much as it was thought i think it was the the other dogs that had got away and you know that were causing a lot of the problems yeah yes. Yeah. yeah, well, that was definitely the case in Tasmania when they had the bounty on the thylacine. That was very trumped up. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I, I have spoken to a few people who have trapped them on the mainland in South Australia and, and known what they were back in the 50s. What did um, they do with them? Oh, they dispatched them because they were doggers. They were out there doing dingo control, basically, oh, for right. the pastoralists. You know, yeah. it was it's a classic example of people panicking when they they realize what they've got and they don't want to get in trouble so they bury it so i know of one property in new south wales where that's happened twice (laughs) in the last 40 years twice that's happened and they they've they've buried the evidence both times so that's pretty tragic but 
Okie doke. Awesome, Janice. Thank you very much. <laughs> Lovely to talk to you. And, um, yeah, I do look forward to being able to send you some stuff. It's it's a real bit of nostalgia. Thank you very much. Awesome. Well, stay safe and keep well, and hopefully we'll get to chat again soon. Okie doke. All Thanks, right. Neil. Thanks a lot, Janice. Bye-bye. Bye. Take care.